I'm James Laidler, parish treasurer. When David Thistlethwaite approached me some seven years ago to become treasurer, he said the job would be quite straightforward, and indeed at the time it was. However, the pandemic has changed all that. The church has grown enormously, and we now, in addition to providing our normal church activities, provide vital services to the community. From being quite a simple operation, we now employ six members of staff. The purpose of this video is to bring you up to date with the state of the parish finances, where we stand, where we're going, and how we can get the church into a strong position financially, as well as a strong position in the community. Because we have so many purposes now for the use of our money, we now have five different pots of money, or as they're properly known, funds. These five pots of monies are emergency food parcels, the fabric fund, or the fund for maintaining the building, the community fund, general fund, and the investment fund. I'll start with the investment fund because it's uh, probably the quickest one to get out of the way. We have investments in the church with a value of between 100 and 120,000 pounds, and these historically come from legacies in the past. With the agreement in the, of the PCC and the charity commissioners, about 60,000 pounds of this money has been realized over the last four years to finance the CAP Center. But the funds as they stand are not for general use in the church. Moving on, I'd like to talk about the emergency food parcel services. This fund was established two years ago to provide money to enable the purchase of food that we deliver to those in need in the community. The Emergency Food Parcels Fund is kept separate as it is generally funded by grants from Chorley Borough Council and Lancashire County Council. The operation, however, is heavily supported by gifts of food from individual donors and also local supermarkets who will be most supportive. During 2023, 976 parcels were delivered locally with a value of £20,000. This goes down to a lot of hard work by Cheryl and Karen and all the team of drivers who deliver this food. At the start of 2024, the fund had enough money to sustain the service for the first four or five months of this year. And I'm pretty hopeful that that will be maintained with further gifts from supermarkets, donors and support from the councils. From looking around you, you'll be aware of some of the issues we have with the building and the plans we have to make the building more usable in the community. So a fabric fund was established in 2023 to progress the reordering and repair of the church building and also to undertake renovation of the church organ. Monies have been raised into the fund from the sale of our property in Park Road from a most generous individual personal donation and many fundraising activities through the Raise the Roof campaign. At the end of the year, the fund stood at 321,000 and that's after we have spent 26,000 pounds on the project to date and also 28,000 pounds on the organ. I should also mention at this stage that the Friends of St. Lawrence have spent a 30, further £30,000 on the repair of the organ, and this work is now particularly well advanced. Now I'll turn to the Community Fund. The Community Fund finances the following. The Taste Cafe, Monday Open Table and the Christmas Lunch, the Christians Against Poverty Debt Centre, the work of the Parish Nurse, and the staff costs of the Taste Coordinator, the Operations Administrator, CAP Manager and the Parish Nurse and quite importantly, a contribution of 50% of the total cost of church electricity, gas and insurance. So how does the community fund stand? At the start of the year, the community fund had £28,500. The budget for the year shows expenditure of around £65,000. After allowing for funding that's already in place for the CAP manager and the parish nurse, we estimate a funding gap of around £25,000 needs to be filled for the year. So how do we address the shortfall? We address it with a little bit of confidence. We will continue to access and apply for grants from our partners and other grant bodies which produced £35,000 to the fund last year. We pray that donations will continue from a number of generous individual donors and we will encourage further individuals to commit to supporting our community work through gifts of money but also more importantly, and very importantly, volunteering. Now I'd like to move on to the last of the funds, and that's the general fund, and probably the fund that keeps me awake most of the time. Income to the general fund mainly comes from parishioners' gifts on a regular basis, plus where possible gift aid. We also receive regular and generous personal donations on top. Over the past few years, we have received some generous grants from the Diocese of Blackburn to help us meet some shortfalls in our budget. They also currently provide a grant to enable us to employ Jill Smith, 
who is helping us substantially with the work towards reordering and repair of our building. The General Fund receives the profits from the parish shop and from room hire charges. It also receives the income from fundraising events like our Sunday concerts. As I mentioned earlier, it has also received £22,000 last year from the Community Fund and we receive finally a small amount of income from our investments. So what are our major expenses? Our major expenses start with the parish ministry cost, known as the parish share, which was £92,000 in 2023. Our electricity, gas and insurance was £37,000 last year. That's nearly tripled from four years ago. And the General Fund pays all our remaining overheads and staff costs. The figure of £92,000 we pay to the diocese will raise a few eyebrows. And I think it's important to let people know where that money goes. Around about 70% of that money goes towards the cost of our rector, believe it or not. Now he doesn't get paid that sort of sum of money, but there are additional costs of his pension, housing, etc. It's also important to know that the diocese does quite a lot of other things. It's involved in training new priests, and it's also involved in supporting parishes that are less well off than we are, and without whose help, parishes in poor areas may not exist. So how do our general funds stand? Well, this is where the story is not quite so bright. Last year, we had income of £205,000 and expenses of £220,000, a deficit of £15,000. For this year, I'm forecasting a deficit of £35,000. And at the start of the year, we had an opening balance of £10,000. So we're facing a shortfall. So what are we going to do about this? I can't realistically expect everybody to rally round together and fill a gap of £35,000 overnight. But there, are, there is one simple step which I would ask everybody to consider. Many of our regular givers are most generous and give through the Parish Giving Scheme. The Parish Giving Scheme was established a few years ago and we now have the majority of our regular givers using it. The scheme operates on a direct debit basis. The system is safe, secure and confidential. Very importantly, gift aid that may be reclaimable is reclaimable monthly. You can opt to increase your gift through the parish giving scheme by inflation automatically. One-off gifts can also be made using the parish giving scheme. You can join the, the scheme simply by paper, on the phone or online. And for me personally, it makes my life a lot more simple and much less prone to errors. So I'd like to address everybody, whether you come to the five o'clock on Saturday, the nine o'clock on Sunday, or the 11 o'clock on Sunday. If you're not part of the Parish Giving Scheme, please consider it. So if you use standing orders, if you use the Green Envelope Scheme, if you don't attend weekly at church, but you give money regularly through the card reader or in other ways, if you put cash on the plate, please consider switching to the Parish Giving Scheme. The scheme also allows people to make one-off gifts to the church. Again, gift day can be reclaimed. And in the short term, we'll be establishing a separate parish giving scheme for those who want to make specific donations to the community fund. And finally, if you're one of those already using the parish giving scheme, I would ask you to consider prayerfully whether or not you're in a position to increase your gift to the church to help us try and close our funding gap. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Over the few, coming few weeks, you will see at services volunteers with Parish Giving Scheme Advisor on a lapel badge, and they'll be very happy to discuss anything with you concerning the Parish Giving Scheme. Please do take the time to talk to them. To me, and to so many of us who come to church regularly or volunteer regularly, St. Lawrence is a very special place. Let's all work together to make sure that the firm foundations in proclaiming the gospel are maintained, but maintained on a firm and secure financial footing. Thanks very much. <laughs>